Hello guys, if you are uh, looking for a wonderful preparation schedule for cat which tells you what you should do on a week by week basis and a day by day basis, go no further than to I am. So just check out the description here. It's a fabulous link. Click that and then just see what variant of it works for you. Download this, stick it somewhere and you're good to go. Best wishes. If a certain weight of an alloy of silver and copper is mixed with 3 kg of pure silver, the resulting alloy will have 90% silver by weight weight of an alloy of silver and copper so silver plus copper in alloy plus 3 plus 90 percent silver by weight this is 90 percent silver okay so this is or ag plus 3 by ag plus cu plus 3 is 9 by 10 nice the same weight of the initial alloy mixed with 2 kg of another alloy which has 90% silver by weight. The resulting alloy will have 87% silver by weight. Same weight of the initial alloy. So Ag plus Cu. 2 kg of another alloy which is plus 2 kg. That will be the denominator which has 80% silver. Ag plus 1.8 equals 84 by 100. 0.84% silver by weight. What we are doing effectively, we are calculating silver by total. Silver by total is 9 by 10, silver by total is 84 by 100. If we solve these two, we should get silver, copper, weight of the initial alloy, the AG plus Cu, something. And so, forget this equation. I just started off by writing it. We don't have to write that. S weight of silver in alloy plus 3 divided by weight of alloy plus 3 is 9 by 10. Weight of silver plus 1.8. Why 1.8? 90% of 2 by Weight of alloy plus 2 is 84 by 100. Cross multiply, simplify. Okay. 10 Ag plus 30 equals 9 Ag plus Cu plus 9 Cu plus 27. Ag plus 3 is 9 times copper. 84 by 100 is 21 by 25. So Ag plus 1.8 into 25 is Ag plus Cu plus 2 into 21. 25 Ag, 1.8 in 25 is 45 equals 21 Ag plus 21 Cu plus 42 or 4 Ag plus 3 is 21 Cu the previous equation was Ag plus 3 is 9 Cu. Ag plus 3 or 4 Ag plus 12 is 36 Cu. 9 is 15 Cu. Copper is 9 by 15, just 3 by 15. 3 by 5, sorry. 4, we also have Ag plus 3 is 9 Cu. We can plug in that Ag plus 3 is 9 into 3 by 5 which is 27 by 5 which is 5.4 so ag plus 3 is 5.4 ag is 2.4 ag is 2.4 copper is 0 0.6 2.4 plus 0 0.6 is 3 that's an elaborate computation question write down the equation carefully cross multiply simplify solve the equation and then we are through not such a big fan of these questions because heavily computation calculation intensive nothing conceptual write down the equation and then cross multiply and solve they're testing solving rather than funda okay we do we deal with what we have in front of us anil can paint a house in 12 days while barun can paint in 16 days anil barun and chandru undertake to paint the house for 24,000. three of them together complete the painting in six days if chandru is paid in proportion to the work done by him amount in inr received by him Anil works for 12 day, uh, 6 days, so Anil will complete 6 by 12, Barun also works for 6 days, Barun will complete 6 by 16, remaining is done by Chandru, so subtract that, we'll get the remaining, then we are through, 6 by 12 is 1 by 2, 6 by 16 is 3 by 8, 1 by 2 is 4 by 8, these two together do 7 by 8, 7 8th of the task Anil and Barun complete. 1 8th is done by Chandru. Remaining. What am I doing? They can do 
one twelfth the task in a day. Anil works for six days, six by twelve. Varun works for six days. He can complete in sixteen days, six by sixteen. Between the two of them, they finish seven eighth of the task in those six days. That means the remaining one eighth is done by Chandu. So he should get paid one eighth of twenty four thousand. One eighth of twenty four thousand is three thousand. Mira and Amal walk along a circular track, starting from the same point at the same time. They walk in the same direction. Then, in 45 minutes, Amal completes exactly three more rounds than Mira. If they walk in opposite direction, then they meet for the first time exactly after three minutes. I was put off by this a little bit. Then, if they walk in the same direction, then in 45 minutes, Amal completes exactly three more rounds than Mira. But if they walk in the same direction or in opposite direction, in 45 minutes they can complete only. The same, the same number of laps, and so if they walk in the same direction. I just didn't get that, and so let's take Mira takes m minutes for a lap. Amal takes a minutes for a lap, and so in 45 minutes, Mira will do 45 by m laps. Amal will do 45 by a or 45 by a laps. Amal completes exactly three more rounds than Mira. 45 by m. Plus three equals forty-five by a, or forty-five by m, forty-five by a minus forty-five by m is three. Nice. They walk in opposite direction. Then they meet for the first time exactly after t minutes. And so, and so, to complete a lap. Mira takes m minutes. I'm going to take a minutes. Or the speed which they travel is lap by m, lap by a. The relative speed will be lap by m plus lap by a. So the time taken for one round will be lap by lap by m plus lap by a. This is equal to three. Or one by One by m plus one by a is three, or one by m plus one by a is one by three. After this, solve these two. We can get m and a, and then simplify that. This is forty-five by a minus forty-five by m, or we we'll write these two equations down. Forty-five by a minus forty-five by m equals three. One by a plus one by m equals one by three. This I'm going to rewrite it as one by a minus one by m equals three by forty-five, which is one by fifteen. The number of rounds Mira walks in one hour is how much? So we want to find m. If I subtract one from this, one from the other, this from that, then two by m equals one by three minus one by fifteen, which is five by fifteen minus one by fifteen, which is four by fifteen, or One by m is two by fifteen. Or Mira takes fifteen by two minutes for a lap. She takes seven and a half minutes for a lap. The number of rounds Mira walks in one hour. In fifteen minutes, she'll do two laps. In one hour, she'll do eight laps. A four-digit number is formed by using only the digits one, two, and three, such that both two and three appear at least once. It's a four-digit number. Two and three sit here at least once. I'm going to do this in two steps. I'm going to think about what the digits are, and then think about what combinations can come. And so, what the digits are and what combinations can come. What I mean by that, is I'm going to put digits in, and then think about in how many ways the digits can be rearranged. So, suppose I say two, three, two, one. Then I won't write two, three, one, two. Both are same. I'll think about two, three, two, one, and then think about in how many ways we can rearrange that. Right? So two of the digits are two and three. So we're worried about only the remaining. And so these could come from one, two, and three. So these digits, this combo. We're worried only about this. And so what could it be? We could have the same digit, or it could be one, one, two, two, three, three. That is possible. Or there could be different digits. It could be one, two. One three, two three. Right. I'm not thinking the three options for this, three options for this. 
one two three one two three so nine combinations totally that's the math around it if we do that then one two will get counted two one will also get counted i don't want to these are all different selections for the last two digits and so so if i don't want to count one two and two one i don't want to count one three and three one so what are the possible digits the digits could be two three one one two three two 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 three 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 two three one two two three one three two three two three number of numbers possible this is four factorial by two factorial well this is four factorial by three factorial four four factorial by three factorial four four factorial by two factorial twelve four factorial by two factorial twelve four factorial by two factorial into two factors two two factors in the denominator six add all of this up that should be our answer twelve plus twelve plus twelve is thirty six forty 44, 50, 50 totally. Yeah. Beautiful question, but really tricky. You have to be very careful about what you are counting. Answer is 50. The triangle ABC, angle BCA is 50 degrees. I mean, wonderful question. Really challenging. I struggle with this. BCA is 50. So, BCA. This is 50 degrees. The solving part of this question is very simple. But the diagram was a little weird. D and D are points on AB and AC respectively, such that AD equal to DE. AD is equal to DE. AD is equal to DE. Nice. F is a point on BC such that BD equal to DF. Find angle, then angle FDE in degrees. This angle. Right? I'm going to talk about angles A, B, and C of triangle A, B, C as angle A, angle B, angle C. And so this angle is angle B. This will also be angle B, isosceles triangle. This angle is angle A. This will also be angle A. Straight away, I can say this angle is 180 minus B. This angle is 180 minus A. What we need to find here is x or 50 degrees plus 180 minus b plus 180 minus a plus x equals 360 degrees. Why? Four angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. 180 plus 180 is 360. This goes away. 50 plus 180 minus b plus 180 minus a plus x equals 360 a plus b a plus b is 130 degrees so 50 minus 130 plus x equal to 0 or 50 minus 130 is minus 80 x minus 80 is 0 x is 80 degrees i saw such triangle i saw such triangle it took me a while to draw the diagram so very um, I've not seen this diagram before. I wouldn't say non-intuitive. So I had to mark very carefully. This is equal to this. This is equal to this. After you draw the diagram, this becomes simpler. Isosceles here. Isosceles here. A and A. B and B. 180 minus B. 180 minus A. This is given. We can find that. A plus B is 130. That much is clear. For a real number, if log A to the base 15 plus log A to the base 32, by log A to the base 15 into log A to the base 32 is 4. This is of the form A plus B by AB. I'm going to carve this out separately. 1 by log a to the base 32 plus 1 by log a to the base 15 is equal to 4. The first term by the whole denominator, second term by the whole denominator. The first time log a to the base 15 will get cancelled, second time log a to the base 32 will get cancelled. 1 by log a to the base 32 is log 32 to the base a plus log 15 to the base a is 4 nice or log of 32 into 15 to the base a is 4 or a power 4 is 32 into 15 480 a is fourth root of 480 where should it lie 4 power 4 is 16 square 256 5 power 4 is 625, 3 power 4 is 81.
A is between two, A power 4 is between these two, A should lie between 4 and 5. The arithmetic mean of scores of 25 students in an exam is 50. So 25 students total is 50 into 25, which is 1, 2, 5, 0. Nice. Five of these students top the examination with the same score. So we have A, 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 A. Five toppers all equal. The scores of the other students are distinct integers with the lowest being 30. And the maximum source possible score of the toppers is we want to find maximum of A. Sum of everything is 1250. The smallest is 30. All of these added up together is 1250. This has to be as high as possible. These have to be as low as possible. So the remaining 20 students should have as low a total as possible. They're distinct integers. Are we talking about 30, 31, 32, 33, all the way till whatever the last number is. So 30 to 50 will be 21 numbers till 49. Find the sum of all of this. Add to 5a equated to 1, 2, 5, 0, we are through. This is an arithmetic progression, 20 terms. Sum of all this will be 20 by 2 into 30 plus 49 or 10 into 79 which is 790. So 5a equals 1250 minus 790, which is 460. 5 times a is 460. A should be 92. Maximum possible way of value of a. One part of a hostel's monthly expense is fixed and the other part is proportional to the number of its borders. Fixed plus variable cost. The hostel collects rupees 1600 per month from each border. This is what they get in terms of uh, revenues. When the number of borders is 50, the profit of the hostel is rupees 200 per border. That is, their cost is 1400 per border. They, they collect 1600, their cost is 1400. So, fixed cost plus 50 times variable cost is 50 times 1400. They make 1600 revenue, they make a profit of 200, or their cost should be 1400. 1400 per border. There are 50 borders. 50 into 1400 is the total cost. F plus 50 V is 50 into 1400. And when they, the number of broad borders is 75, the profit of the hostel is 250 per border. Or F plus 75 V is 75 into 1350. Why 1350? 1600 minus 250. They make more profit per border because the variable cost is one amount. The fixed cost is going to be now distributed among larger number of people. Instead of F being distributed over 50 people, F being distributed over 75 people makes life simpler. F by 75 minus F by uh, F by 50 minus F by 75 should be the remaining 50 rupees. That difference which they make. When the number of borders is 80, the total profit of the hostel. If you need to find F plus 80 B. We subtract one from the other, we get 25V equals 75 into 1350 minus 55 into this. Or take out a 25, 3 into 1350, 0, 5, 9, 0, 4050 minus 2800. Or 25V is 25 times 1250 or the variable cost per border is 1250 wonderful now we want to do for ATV what is F plus ATV F plus 50V is 1400 into 50 add another 30V we are through. So th this number should be plus 30 times 1250. Whatever this number turns out to be, the, this is that will be the total cost they have subtracted from total revenues they have. We are through. The total cost will be 1400 into 50. Three, three zeros, four zeros. So 70,000 plus two zeros. 3 into 125, 375, 37,500. Add these two up, 
this is the total cost that they have when there are 80 students total revenues will be 1600 into 80 they realize 1600 from each border 80 students 0 0 0 128 from that subtract this 128,000 minus 107,000 is 21,000 minus 108 is 20,000 20,500 that is there in solve methodically nothing there one day Rahul started work at 9 a.m. and Gautam joined him two hours later then they worked together and completed the work at 5 p.m. That is Rahul works from 9 to 5, 8 hours. Gautam works from 11 to 5, 6 hours. 8 times what Rahul does per hour. 6 times what Gautam does per hour can complete the task. If both had started at 9 a.m. and worked together, the work would have been completed 30 minutes earlier. That is 7.5 hour plus 7.5 G would also complete the task. Equate these two. 8R plus 6G equals 7.5R plus 7.5G. 0.5R is 1.5G or R is 3G. Rahul is thrice as good as Gautam. Working alone, the time Rahul would have taken in hours to complete the task. Working alone, that means no 6G. R is 3G. So 8R plus 6G is 8R plus 2R. 6G is 2R or 10R or 10 times Rahul's output per hour can complete the task or Rahul will take 10 hours to finish. Very routine question. Number of hours and into per hour output, the total output. And then equate it to whatever task is there. Simplify that. The total of male and female populations in a city increased by 25% from 1970 to 1980. During the same period, the male population increased by 40%, while the female population increased by 20%. So male went to 1.4 male, female went to 1.2 female, male plus female went to 1.25 times male plus female. First of all, if we equate these two, we should get some equation linking M and F. Let's do that. 1.4M plus 1.2F equals 1.25M plus 1.25F or 0.15M equals 0.05F. 3M equal to F. Number of females is thrice the number of males. Nice. With this figure treated as a, as a mixture also, 40% and 20% mixed to give 25%. That's the other approach for this. From 1980 to 1990, the female population increased by 25%. Let's say 1980 to 1990, female population increased by 25%. In 1990, so let's start with this. So 1970, M, F, M equals F equals 3M. 1980, this becomes 1.4M, this becomes 3.6M. 20%, 40%. 1980 to 90, the female population increased by 25%. 1990, this increased by 25%. 25% is 1 fourth, that is 0.9M. This goes to 4.5M. Nice. In 1990, the female population is twice the male population. The male population should have been 2.25M. Then the percentage increased the total of male and female populations in the city from 1970 to 1990. Or we started at 4M. We end with 6.75M. We want to find the percentage increase. Percentage increase is 2.75 by 4 into 100. 275 divided by 4 goes 6 times 24, 35, 8 times 32, 30, 68.75 percent, which is there. Very simple question. So, the first equation gives you the ratio of male to female population. Track it from 70 to 80, 80 to 90. Write down the equation. We are through. Let ABCD be a parallelogram. The lengths of side AD and diagonal AC are 10 and 20 respectively. 
the angle ADC is equal to 30 degrees with the area of parallelogram in square centimeter. It's a nightmare of a question. And I took a long time looking for a juicy method and I didn't find it. And then I said, look, I'm going to brute force this. I don't know if there is a more elegant method than the brute force method. So I'm going to do it by the brute force method. In case there's an elegant method, please, please do chip into us. And so A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Angle A, A, D, C is 30. This doesn't look 30. We'll live with that. A, D and A, C are 10 and 20. So this is 10. This is 20. And then the area of the parallelogram in square centimeters is this is 10. This is 10. Right. So we need to find area of the parallelogram. So we need to find base into height. We don't know the height. I thought of using some trigonometry and finding the height. There's no direct way. If this angle were 30, brilliant. Half into half BC sine A, we're finding the area and we are through. It is not. We to find some other way of doing this. We can find this using cosine rule. Somehow we can manage and find this side. Let's do that. And so 10 square plus DC square minus 2 into 10 into DC into cos 30 equals 20 square. This square plus this square minus 2 into product of these two into cos of this angle is that square. Cosine rule a square plus b square minus 2ab cos c is equal to c square. We're plugging that in. Cos 30 is root 3 by 2. So 100 plus dc square minus 2 into 10 into dc into root 3 by 2 is 400. So dc square minus 10 root 3 dc equals 300. Or dc square minus 10 root 3 dc minus 300 equal to 0. It's a nice equation. We've got this. Luckily enough, I can see this straight away and then say we get only one value for dc. But the product of the root is negative. One is positive, one is negative. So we don't have to worry about the negative root. Luckily, we'll get only one value of dc. If we manage to find that value of dc, we're through. We can then, 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 then simplify this. 10 root 3, 5 root 3 whole square. Uh, I can I can split this in terms of completion of squares. 5 root 3 whole square is 3 into 5, 25 is 75. I can write this as plus 75 minus 75 and then go somewhere with that. I can simplify it like that. So I'm going to write this as dc square minus 10 root 3 dc plus 5 root 3 whole square equals 300 plus 5 root 3 whole square. This is dc minus 5 root 3 whole square equals 300 plus 75 dc minus 5 root 3 equals square root of 375 nice square root of 375 we can take a 25 outside this is 25 into 15 so dc equals 5 root 3 plus 5 root 15. Nice. So we've got DC by completing the square and all of that. We know AD is 10. So area of this triangle is half into AD into DC into sine 30 into 2 would be area of the parallelogram. So area of the parallelogram would be half into 10 into 5 root 3 plus 5 root 15. into sine 30 into 2. That's the number we're looking for. Half AB sine C for area of the triangle into 2 for area of the parallelogram. This is AD. This is DC. We found DC by plugging in cosine rule. AD was given half B AB sine C. AB and sine of the angle in between into 2. That's what we do. So this is a 5. This, this get cancelled. This is 10 into 5 root 3 plus 5 root 15 into 1 by 2 or 5 into 5 root 3 plus 5 root 15 
or 25 into root 3 plus root 15. Yep, this is here finally. <laughs> really complicated question, totally skip worthy. I don't understand what is being touched. We plug in cosine rule, find that side. Then we plug in sine rule, find the area of the triangle. Multiply by 2, find area of parallelogram. There's one out of n places where something can go wrong. Even the damn quadratic doesn't split naturally. So I, I saw the choices and I, I figured that look, this involves some, some poking around with uh, sine rule, cosine rule. Simply not happy doing this question. <laughs> so it's one of those brute force, not elegant uh, solutions. You can't do it yourself, you do it. Sometimes questions are like this, where we put our head down and say, look, I'm going to solve this through, no matter what. So that is what we end up doing. But from an exam point of view, skip for the, not worth solving. A park is shaped like a rhombus and has an area of 96 square meters. If 40 meters of fencing is needed to exclose the park, the cost in INR of laying electrical wires along its two diagonals at the rate of 125 per meter. Let's do this. This is a rhombus of side 10. The moment I see 10, I, I know that I'm tempted to think about 6, 8, 10. 6, 8, 6, 8, because a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. If this were 6, this were 8. This would be 8, this would be 6. Area would be half into 16 into 12, product of the diagonals, which is 8 into 12, 9 to 6, that works. So the moment I have hypotenuse 10, I'm thinking 6, 8, 10. Luckily enough, 6, 8, 10 works. This is a triangle we're talking about. This is a rhombus we're talking about. So the, along its two diagonals, along the 16 meter diagonal and the 12 meter diagonal, we're doing 16 plus 12 is 28. So along a 28 meter diagonal, we are plugging in 125 rupee per per meter fence 28 meters into 125 so this is 7 into 4 into 125 7 into 500 or 7 by 2 into 8 into 125 this is 1000 this is 3.5 3500 is the total cost rupees 3005 nice simple juicy question a reward for powering through other tougher question 3x plus 2 mod y plus y Three x plus two mod y plus y equal to seven. X plus mod x plus three y equal to one. We want to find x plus two y. First, as I look, can I add these two equations and get x plus two y? Can I subtract one from the other and get x plus two y? Tough, because there's a mod y here and a mod x here. They're not going to go away in a hurry. Right? So, what do we have to do? One beautiful thing. So, very simple idea. Mod a equal to a if a is greater than 0, equal to minus a, if a is less than 0, equal to 0 when a is 0. And so we can use that idea. Then when x is positive, mod x will be x. When x is negative, mod x will be minus x. We can form different equations, then solve them. So we'll have to solve for x positive, y negative, x negative, y positive. Both positive, both negative. We get four sets of simultaneous equations, solve them, and then the solution we get should satisfy this criteria. If it does, then we have an answer. Then we can plug it. We said I have to solve the simultaneous equations four different variants. Now that is tricky. That's a pain in the neck. Uh, maybe that's what they want us to do, which is which is fine. But then it's going to take time. One other thing that we can notice: x plus mod x x plus mod x, x plus mod x, if we add x and mod x, it is going to be 0. x plus mod x will be 0 when x is negative. And so maybe there is something there. So what do we do? First of all, I'll put x as negative. That is these two. Because then this goes to 0. And then see where that takes me. So if x is negative, this goes to 0. 3y is 1 y is 1 by 3. If y is 1 by 3, x is negative works. We are true. Let's go there to the first equation. 3x plus 2 mod y plus y is 7. y is 1 by 3. So 3x plus 2, 2y plus y is 3y. y into 3 into 1 by 3 is 1, 7. 3x is 6, x is 2. This doesn't work. If we put x is negative, y is 1 by 3, if we put y is 1 by 3, I get x is 2. 
that doesn't work so x is negative is not possible right now i have only two equation both positive both uh, both positive x positive and y positive x positive and y negative both positive will have 3x plus 3y is 7 and 2x plus 3y is 1 i subtract one from the other i'll get x is 6 if x is 6 6 plus 6 is 12 12 plus 3y is 1 3y is minus 11 can work y will have to be negative x is positive y is positive does not yield any solution x is negative does not yield any solution x positive y negative so we are looking for x positive y negative that is 3x minus 2y plus y is 7 and x plus x plus 3y is 1 3x minus y is 7 2x plus 3y is 1 Multiply this by three. Nine x minus three y is twenty-one. Add these two. Eleven x is twenty-two. X is two. When you plug in x is two, we should get y as negative. We don't get y as negative. There's no solution. Done. Game over. When x is two, let's plug this in. Two plus two is four. Plus three y is one. Three y is minus three. Y is minus one. 2 comma minus 1 works. Then x plus 2y. 2 plus 2 into minus 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. This works. There is perhaps some juicy solution sitting here somewhere, but but I don't know. If we brute force it, we get the answer. We roll with it. In a tournament, a team has played 40 matches so far and won 30 percent of them. 40 so far and won 30 percent of them. If they win 60% of the remaining matches, their overall win percentage will be 50%. They win 60%. Their overall win percentage will be 50%. You mix six and get 30 and 60 mixed to get 50. The ratio in which they should be mixed is 10 is to 20 or 1 is to 2. That means 40 matches have been played, 80 are remaining. Brilliant. One step done. 80 remaining matches, totally, totally 120 matches. Suppose they win 90% of the remaining matches, then the total number of matches won by that team. So 40 per 40 matches they have a 30% win percentage. Remaining 80 matches they have a 90% win percentage. They got a new coach who's doing wonders with them. Or they win 12 matches and 72 matches, 84 matches totally. Their overall win percentage will be 70%. They win 84 total. A shop owner bought a total of 64 shirts from a wholesale market that came in two sizes, small and large. 64, small and large. The price of a small shirt was 50 less than that of a large shirt. X, X minus 50. She paid a total of 5,000 for the large shirts. L into X is 5,000. And a total of eighteen hundred for the small shirts. S into x minus fifty is eighteen hundred. S can be written as sixty-four minus L. Then the price of a large shirt and a small shirt together in INR is so. The the x number should be less than uh, should be more than fifty. The L the number of large shirts should be less than sixty-four. And so this number is less than sixty-four. This is more than 50 and multiplying those two to get 50000 so it could be 50 into 100 something like this so we're factorizing 5000 l should be an integer that much we know x also is likely an integer otherwise it becomes tricky 50 into 100 l is 50 x is 100 64 minus l is 14 Into fifty? No, nope, this doesn't work. This is not. There's only seven hundred. We need to get eighteen hundred. So we need to poke around with this. L into x is five thousand. Sixty-four minus L into x minus fifty is thousand eight hundred. So we can substitute this, solve this, plug it in here, and then simplify. 
but the price of a large shirt and a small shirt together this seems to be this is telling us they are probably looking at integer answers 5000 is 5 into 5 cube into 2 cube right so so it can be factorized okay put some parts it's 2 cube into 5 power 4 i'm going to put some parts here other parts there x should be more than 50 so and l should be less than 64 so we can we can play around with this the number of large church should be less than uh, 64 the price should be more than more than 50 so we, we can find factors of 5000 less than 54 less than 64 and then try to try to poke around with it so 5 2 cube into 5 power 4 and so i can write this as 2 into something too small 4 into 8 into or 10 into remaining 20 into 16 into one work different combination and then see which works this 2 4 8 they're too small fine you see l is less than 64 this x is more than 50 and x should be the remaining 2 square into 5 power 4 it's a very large number 2 into 5 power 4 very large number we don't have to worry about it the number is too large 1000 plus price point 8 into 5 power 4 is 625 doesn't work 64 minus 8 is a large number that number is a very large number it doesn't work 10 into 10 is 2 into 5 gone the total product is 5000 10 into 500 so 54 into 450 too large or 1800 doesn't work 20 into 250 the remaining part would be 44 into 200 that is a large number doesn't work so let's see what can be there we can put 40 into 125 you skip 25 into something 40 into 125 the remaining would be 24 into 75 24 into 75 there's a there's a there lots of threes sitting there 24 into 75 is indeed 1800 75 into 4 is 300 into 6 is 1800 this works 40 large shirts at 125 24 small shirts at 75 that works otherwise you have to go to the quadratic and solve it which is a pain having a punt and trying to play around with it is simpler this number is a multiple of 1800 there should be lots of Three sitting here that is another way of going about it either break 5000 or break 1800 then, then carry on with that so the, the price of a large shirt is 125 small shirt is 75 125 plus 75 is 200 so consider a sequence of real numbers x1 x2 x3 such that xn plus 1 is xn plus n minus 1 for n all n greater than or equal to 1 x1 is minus 1 and x100 equal to one. start with n greater than or equal to 1 so let's say x n equal to 1. So x2 equals x1 plus 1 minus 1. x3 equals x2 plus 2 minus 1. x4 equals x3 plus 3 minus 1. So x1 equals minus 1. x2 is x1 plus 0. So x1 is minus 1. x2 is also minus 1 x3 is x2 plus 1 which is 0 x4 is x3 plus 2 which is 2 x5 is x4 plus 3 which is 5 x6 is x5 plus 4 which is 9 x7 is x6 plus 5 which is 14 and so on and there are two ways of doing this one is to write this equation down and then say, hey, I'm going to write all the way till x100 equals x99 plus 99 minus 1 plus 98. Beautiful set of equations. But where if you add all of these equations and add all of them up, and so and there's an x2 here, x2 here, x3 here, x3 here, x4, x4, all the way to x99, everything will get cancelled. We will get quite simply x100 to be equal to x1 plus 
zero plus one plus two all the way till ninety eight. We know how to do this. So we can plug that in. What is the other way? If we can find a pattern in these numbers. That's brilliant as well. Two, five, nine, fourteen. Very interesting. If you add one to these numbers, one, three, six, ten, fifteen. That's very interesting. This just sum up to one natural number. Sum up to two natural numbers. Sum up to three natural numbers. Sum up to four natural numbers. Sum up to five natural numbers. X seven is sum up to five natural numbers minus one. X six is sum up to four natural numbers minus one. X hundred would be sum up to ninety eight natural numbers minus one. X hundred would be sum up to ninety eight natural numbers plus X one, which is minus one. Or X hundred is equal to one plus two plus three. All the way till ninety-eight minus one. This we know. This is ninety-eight into ninety-nine by two minus one. Ninety-nine into forty-nine minus one. Whatever that number turns out to be. Nine nine sir eighty-one one eight nine four sir thirty-six four forty-one four forty-one one five eight four eight five one minus one, which is four eight five zero. Lovely, lovely, lovely question. I got this wrong a number of times, not just once. A number of times. I simply didn't grab onto the funda. Is x n plus one equal to x n plus n minus one? Beautifully carved out. So be very careful with the detail. Make sure this is marks in the back. If you focus and get the detail right, it should be doable. Yes. A tea shop offers tea, tea in cups of three different sizes. The product of the prices in INR of the three different sizes is equal to eight hundred. The price of the smallest size and the median size. Are in the ratio two is to five. Small, medium, two x, five x. The shop owner decides to increase the price of the smallest and the medium ones by six, keeping the price the largest size unchanged. This becomes two x plus six. This becomes five x plus six. The large one remains as large. In this case, the product is eight hundred. In the second instant, the product then changes to thirty-two hundred. Nice. In the sum of the original price of the three different sizes in INR, we need to find two x plus five x plus L. That's what we need to find. We find x. We are through. Two x becomes two x plus six. Five x becomes five x plus six. Product becomes eight hundred to thirty-two hundred. Product becomes four times, or two x plus six into five x plus six. Divided by two x into five x is four. Right. Two times x plus three into five x plus six is four times two x into five x. One two gets cancelled. We have five x square plus fifteen x plus six x. Plus eighteen equals twenty x square, or we can take this this side. Fifteen x square minus twenty one x minus eighteen is equal to zero. Fifteen into eighteen is the product. We need to rejig that to get this difference of twenty one. So fifteen into two is thirty. Thirty into nine works wonders. So fifteen x square. Minus 30x plus 9x minus 18 equal to zero. 15x into x minus 2 plus 9 into x minus 2 is zero, or x is 2. We don't have to worry about the negative number. X is 2, or this price is 4. This price is 10. 2 into 2, find 2, 10. 4 into 10 is 40. 4 into 10, 40 into something is 800. Forty into two is eighty. Forty into twenty is eight hundred. The new prices four would have become ten. Ten would have become sixteen. This stays as twenty. Forty and one sixty four x. Everything works. So sum of the original prices four plus ten plus twenty thirty four. We are through. The number of distinct pairs of integers m comma n satisfying this inequality. Wonderful, wonderful question. I really struggled with this one. First thing to know is mod a less than mod b is same as 
saying a square less than b square. One implies the other. That's the first step to do. That means we can say 1 plus mn the whole square is less than m plus n the whole square. Or 1 square plus m square n square plus 2mn is less than m square plus n square plus 2mn. Nice. So far so good. Now this 2mn gets knocked off on both sides. 1 plus m square n square minus m square minus n square is less than 0 or 1 minus n square minus m square plus m square n square is less than 0. 1 minus n square minus m square times 1 minus n square is less than 0 or quite beautifully 1 minus m square into 1 minus n square is less than 0. Nice. We're looking at distinct pair of integers product of two numbers is less than zero either this is negative this is positive or the other way around right so either this is negative and this is positive or this is positive and this is negative the beauty of this is this is one minus m square is negative that is reasonable lots of numbers one minus n square is positive one square is one n can't be one it will become 0. 2, 3, 4, 5, it won't work. Only possibility where 1 minus n square is positive is when n equal to 0. Only positive possibility where 1 minus m square is negative is when m is 0. So m equal to 0, n greater than 1 works. If m or n were 1, this won't work, it will become 0. If m is 0, n greater than 1 works. Or n equals 0, m greater than 1 works. Nothing else is possible. If m and n are both more than 1, both will become negative, product will become positive. If either of them is 1, product will go to 0. That doesn't work. So one of them should be 0, other one should be greater than 1. So m 0, n greater than 1 or n 0, m greater than 1. That's the possibility. Now let's come back to this, this question. This is not n greater than 1. This is mod n greater than 1 mod m greater than 1 because we're talking about n square square so plus 1 work then minus 1 work plus 2 work then minus 2 will work plus and minus 1 will not work plus 2 and minus 2 will work modulus of m plus n less than 5 this is an interesting thing so let's attack that modulus of m plus n less than 5 if m is 0 mod n less than 5 when m is 0 mod n less than 5 n has to be greater than 1, be 2, 3, 4. n could be plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4. Exact opposite. If you put n equal to 0, we have mod m less than 5. We know mod m has to be more than 1. m could be plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4. So 0, 2, 0, minus 2, 0, 3, 0, minus 3, 0, 4, 0, minus 4. 6 possibilities plus 6, 12 possibilities. Super tough question. Really, really, really tough question. So it's kind of question which says, okay, I'm not touching this. We square this, then we get somewhere. And still there's a couple of steps to go. And wonderfully tough question. The cost of fencing a rectangular plot is 200 per feet along one side and 100 per foot along the other three sides. And so, and so. Let's say this is 100 per foot, 100 per foot, 100 per foot. 200 per foot. Let's say this is x, x, y, y. If the area of the rectangular plot is 60,000 square feet, then the lowest possible cost of fencing all four sides in INR. The cost of fencing would be 100 y plus 100 x plus 100 y plus 200 x. Or this is 300 x plus 200 y. We know that x into y area is 60,000. We want to find the minimum possible value of 300x plus 200y. 300x plus 200y should be as small as possible. 
uh, and we, sh we should have a scenario where and keeping in mind that x into y is 60,000 and so 300x plus 200y by 2 is greater than or equal to square root of 300x into 200y. 300x into 200y we can find. How do we find that? 300x into 200y, we know xy is 60,000. 300x into 200y we can find. Or the minimum value of this is that. Or the minimum value of 300x plus 200y is 2 times square root of that. Let's find that we are through. The answer we are looking for is 2 times square root of 300x into 200y x into y is 60,000 which is nothing but 200 into 300 so this is 300 into 200 into 200 into 300 so this is 2 times 60,000 or 1 lakh 20,000 if n is a positive integer such that 7th root of 10 into 7th root of 10 whole square all the way to 7th root of 10 whole power n is greater than 999 this is 10 power 1 by 7 into 10 power 2 by 7 all the way to 10 power n by 7 greater than 10 power some number close to 10 cube close to it let's just find this and so 10 power n into n plus 1 by 2 greater than 10 cube it can be cube just keep that in mind just close to that 10 cube is 1000 or n into n plus 1 sorry 1 by 7 times n into n plus 1 by 2 equal to 3 let's solve this n into n plus 1 is 7 into 6 42 or n could be 6 if n were 6 then this would be 1000 if n were 5 it would be less than 1000 anything more than 6 will work the smallest value of n is 6 6 works 7 8 9 will work 5 won't work smallest possible value of n so don't treat this as 999 treat that as 1000 put a 10 cube and then work from there bank a offers 6% interest rate per annum compounded half early so bank a rate is 3% per 6 months Bank B and Bank C offer simple interest, but the annual rate offered by Bank C is twice that of Bank B. B and C, this is R, this is 2R. This is, these two are simple interest, remember that. Raju invests a certain amount in Bank B for a certain period, and Rupa invests 10,000 in Bank C for twice that period. Raju in Bank B for a certain period. So, Raju b for time period t rupa in c for two times t the interest that would accrue to raju during that period is equal to the interest that would have accrued had he invested the same amount in bank a for one year and in that time period same amount as uh, bank a in one year bank a in one year be p into 1.03 whole square that's the amount it would have become this is 1.0609 so 3% compounded squared is 6.09% for the whole year so this bank B interest rate is 6.09% he is putting at 6.09% for T rupees for time T Bank C is twice that rate or twice the time period. So 6.09% impact will be 6.09% into 2 into 2 would be the return that Rupa, Rupa is the other name, right? Rupa gets. Y into 2 into 2. This is the equivalent rate in bank B into 2 because bank C gives twice the rate into 2 because rupa is invested for twice the amount of time that's the amount you get 6.09 percent into 4 is 24.36 percent rupa puts in 10,000 rupees how much should she get 2436
irritatingly complicated question not a fan but still we need to power through f of x is x square minus 7x and g of x is x plus 3 then the minimum value of f of g of x minus 3x f of x plus 3 minus 3x we need to minimize this this is x plus 3 whole square minus 7 times x plus 3 minus 3x let's find this x square plus 6x plus 9 minus 7x minus 21 minus 3x this is x square 6x minus 7x is minus x minus 4x minus 12 simple completion of square x square minus 4x plus 4 this is x square minus 4x plus 4 minus 4 minus 12 or this is x minus 2 the whole square minus 16 we want to find the minimum possible value of x minus 2 whole square minus 16 that can happen when x minus 2 whole square goes to 0 the value will be minus 16 complete the square think of it as a square plus a balancing term we are through free me hello guys if you are looking for a wonderful preparation schedule for cat which tells you what you should do on a week by week basis and a day by day basis go no further than to i am so just check out the description here it's a fabulous link click that and then just see what variant of it works for you download this ticket somewhere and you're good to go best wishes Hush.